So I've had three abortions and one miscarriage, and through the grace of God, I got identical twin girls. Hi, my name is Layla, and I'm gonna tell you my testimony. I was baptized in a Catholic church, but I didn't really grow up going to Catholic church, and as I got older, I met someone that introduced me a little bit to Christianity, but his family was really racist. So that was my first introduction to Christianity. And then when I started to read the Bible, I start with Genesis and I see that, you know, the pain in childbirth for women. So I thought, okay, God's racist and he hates women. So that turned me off from Christianity. Then I was introduced to Buddhism. I learned about Hinduism. I got into the whole new age spirituality movement. I even dabbled a little bit in Wicca and I finally gave everything up and I identified as atheist for a few years of my life. I was completely atheist. In my early 20s, I did a lot of partying. I was drinking a lot. I was promiscuous. I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I ended up getting pregnant and having a miscarriage, which should have been a wake up call, but it wasn't. I got into a seven year relationship and in that relationship, we had two abortions. I really honestly blocked everything out from my mind. All the excuses that we made were the typical excuses that you hear, which is either finances aren't there, we weren't married, um, I don't know, his mom lived out of state, I mean just he didn't feel ready, I probably didn't feel ready, and whatever excuses that we made, we decided to have abortions. That relationship ends, fast forward, I end up meeting somebody else, and after the first year of us dating, I get pregnant again, and I had another abortion. And one thing that you'll see is that once women have one abortion, it's easier to have a second or third. You will often find women that have had multiple abortions. Also, one out of four women has had an abortion. So if you're hanging out with your girlfriends, chances are either you or some of your friends have had an abortion. So the second guy and I end up getting married and uh, i essentially planned the entire pregnancy i said i need to get pregnant at this month the peak of my pregnancy needs to be in winter and i want to have them 2020 in february so they can be aquarian and almost everything perfectly happened i was just one month off and they were born in march 2020 and actually i had twins which is funny because my whole life i always said if i was going to have babies i would have twins now we were having complications in the marriage um, we were kind of headed towards divorce, things weren't working out, but I got married in 2017 and I started my walk in 2018 with Jesus Christ. So I was already working on building my relationship up with God. My marriage isn't working out, but I'm praying for him, praying for our marriage, going to therapy, doing everything that I can to make it work. And then I get pregnant. And I was almost going to have yet another abortion because I thought this marriage is failing. I don't want to be a single mom. And I remember the specific moment that I'm going for a hike to sort of clear my mind. I'm going back and forth. I'm thinking, do I keep it? Do I not keep it? And I remember the exact moment when God spoke to me and said, keep it. And right there on the spot, I canceled my Planned Parenthood appointment. And it ended up being my twins. Then fast forward 11 and a half months later, my husband passes away. And now my fear came true. I'm a single mom of almost one year old twins. So my husband ends up dying February, 2021. And that year essentially I just took off and was just sort of trying to figure out why my life ended up this way, what my purpose is. And all the abortions, the three abortions that I had, I didn't think that I had any trauma or needed any healing. In fact, I had really forgotten about it. I really blocked it out of my mind completely. But it wasn't until after I had my babies that I just felt it festering and I felt like the memories of the abortion was coming up and something in me just kept wanting to confess it. And then I find myself really frustrated and angry and stressed out with my girls and it's difficult, I'm a single mom. And for some reason, the abortion just kept coming up in my mind even though I had blocked it out for many years. So one night I'm on Instagram and I follow Live Action. Um, it's a really good Instagram page. 
and they post something about a woman who just walked out of having an abortion and she says yeah i killed my baby and there were some pro-life activists outside and they mentioned rachel's vineyard so i go on rachel's vineyard instagram and i see that it's basically a retreat to help women and men heal from having abortions so i look at the website i look at the page and i call them up the next day to try to get some information and it is a catholic based retreat and i'm christian and i'm thinking that i'm okay i already know god or died on the cross for our sins and i know that we're forgiven and i think that i'm okay so i call and i speak to her and at first i was like ah, okay maybe maybe i'll do it maybe i'll not but i wasn't really sold on doing it yet of course i had hesitation because i thought that i was okay and then she asks me this have you named your babies and have you held a memorial and i thought name my babies i didn't I even consider them babies i mean i had abortions um, i said well no i haven't and she says well this might be good for you some good healing for you and i said okay i'll consider it so i go on the website and i'm looking through everything again and i found a book called forbidden grief and i had ordered it for myself and i forgot that i ordered it for myself so when it came in the mail i thought it was her that mailed it to me and I thought okay that's smart marketing move that's a smart move so I started to read the book and I saw testimony after testimony of women that have had abortions and the trauma and how all the trauma came up in their lives and many women didn't experience any of the trauma until after they go on to have their babies then everything starts to come up just like me and I saw myself in a lot of these women and I called her back the next day and I said okay, I think I have some work I need to do. Are there any spots available? And she says, yes, there are. So I signed up and I went to Rachel's Vineyard. That weekend was the most healing I have ever done. I mean, even when I first walked in, I was shy and I'm not normally a shy person, but everybody was super nice. And I'm walking in like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm here because I've had abortions. I mean, this is a secret that I have kept for years. The fact that I'm even talking about it openly and doing a video is a testament to my healing because I thought that I was just going to go to the grave and never tell anyone about this. But that's the thing, most women that have had abortions live in secrecy, they live in shame, they live in regret, they live in guilt, but that is not talked about. So my purpose in doing this video is if you have had an abortion or a miscarriage and you, if you haven't named your baby or done a memorial or gone through any healing, I encourage you to either go to Rachel's Vineyard, maybe there's Bible studies in a local church, that you can go through to help in your healing process. If there's any women that are watching this and you're pregnant and you're going back and forth on whether to have an abortion or not, I mean, I hope that this inspires you to think about keeping your baby. When I had my abortions, I was an atheist. I had no relationship with Jesus Christ at all. But that doesn't mean that I didn't have trauma and that, that it didn't affect me in some way. The fact that I completely blocked it out proves to you that it was a very traumatic event. In fact, before Rachel's Vineyard, I had to call my ex-boyfriend and ask him, how was I acting before the first one? How was I acting before the second one? And, you know, why did we choose not to have the baby? Why did we choose to abort? And because I had really blocked everything out of my mind. So even if you're watching this and you are not a follower of Christ and you have an abortion and you still think that you made the right decision because really I thought that I made the right decision. You know, whether it's I don't have any money or it's not the right time or I'm not married or I don't wanna be a single mom. I mean, look, I'm a single mom. I just became a widow. The truth of the matter is this, there will never be a perfect time for you to have a baby. If you are actively trying and you want to have a baby, guess what? It's probably going to be a challenge even when you have your baby. If you don't think that you're living the perfect circumstances right now and you're thinking it's not the perfect time to have a baby, you know what? You're probably going to have challenges keeping that baby, but God is going to take care of you because he promises to. Now, I can't get into the pro-life conversation really without incorporating God. Right now, there's a bill that they are trying to pass that would allow women to have abortions up until the baby is born. The narrative in social media is, it's not the right time, you can't make it happen, you need the perfect 
circumstances, the perfect husband, the perfect everything in order to have your baby. And if that isn't you, have an abortion. Planned Parenthood is designed to kill your baby. If you go into a Planned Parenthood, they are going to sell that narrative that it's just a clump of cells, that it's no big deal. If you have second thoughts, they're not going to direct you to some resources that can help you take care of that baby. Their whole mission is to kill your baby. I used to be so against pregnancy clinics when I was pro-abortion but pregnancy clinics will tell you the truth they will show you the developmental stage of where your baby is and they're going to give you resources in order for you to take care of your baby and if you currently don't have a relationship with jesus christ i mean my whole life i didn't have a relationship with him but i know he is the one that spoke to me and told me to keep it he is continuing to take care of my family and he will take care of yours the first step and to starting a relationship with Jesus Christ is asking. Pray for him. Ask him to reveal himself to you. And then just listen. My hope is that this inspired you and that if you need healing, please reach out to somebody and get that healing. You can always message me on my social media. I'm going to start a Bible study. It's an eight week course to help women that have had miscarriages and abortions get some healing. Otherwise you can reach out to Rachel's Vineyard. Maybe you can look out to local churches um, or look for different healing organizations out there like Surrendering the Secret. And if you're pregnant right now and you're scared and you don't know if you should keep it, or abort it, I'm gonna tell you. It is a baby, God knows it, God knows you, God loves you, and God will take care of you.